All right, let's make a let's make a quick drum beat. Um, we have some loops, we have a rotes, we have a vocal. So let's try and find the groove. Um, we're all in the same boat. I don't know if it's gonna work out or not. Let's just try it. Um, let's just grab the kick. Boom. Let's make something super simple. Um, boom. Let's grab a snare real quick so we have something to balance it out with. I'm just pulling the snare sound from my library. It's just, I have a folder called Arcadi samples and it's just samples that I collected or that I really liked from several sessions and then I just hold them in there. Oh, bamboo snare. Fine with me. And then let's load in these two guys maybe. Different tracks. Okay. Well, these three are good together. I know a lot of people like to use samplers for beats or just a keyboard and they play it and record it and then they quantize it. I personally prefer to just do it manually piece by piece because then I can control um, the volume of every sample. In the snares, we have a little bit of tone and we have a more like the sizzle, like the snares. And then we have a flam too, kind of like a clap in the snare. Let's make sure the length is proper and we'll just fade it just in case. I feel like, see like for instance this, this is just so unpleasant to look at. Let's just make it nice, just open it up. Kick is probably too long anyway for this song. Kick length is something I always have to adjust to the tempo of the song. Um, to the key of the song, to, um, yeah, different factors. So let's just loop this. So now we need something like a hi-hat. Um, I prefer to use different sounds that kind of sound like hi-hats as opposed to just using a hi-hat because that's what everybody would instantly do. So let's look for loops, drum loops. Percussion loops, maybe. No. Okay. Acoustic guitar strumming. Let's see if this works. All right. So, this is a little bit too loud. And now, of course, it's on top of the kick and my main priority is always for the kick to be completely clean. So nothing can touch the kick. So we'll send it in the percussion group. So now every time the kick hits, the, um, the acoustic guitar strumming goes down a little bit. So the sidechain groups have a simple compressor on them, just a Cubase compressor, and they just have different ratios. So for instance, the bass, um, goes back at a slower time, which is 40. I would set it to 40, we changed it earlier, but let me set it to 40. So it's a slow release because my kick is fairly long. So I want the kick to end and the bass to basically come back when the kick is done, um, which is really fast still. Uh, all the instruments um, have a release of 20 milliseconds. So it's a little faster and they're not as compressed or sorry, not as side-chained. Percussion is very light. It's all the way up here. Um, the ratio is lighter, 5.9, unfortunately not 6.9. Um, and 10 milliseconds, so they're super fast. So you barely hear it, but it gives it enough space. Um, so the kick just doesn't overload and nothing, nothing should distort in the session. Okay, so my personal issue with loops, percussion loops, is always the reverb that is printed or the room that is printed into the loops. Like for instance, let's listen to it. There's like a little bit of room. I like, I like it tight and neat. So I like to use a transient master or transient designer and just by dialing back the sustain knob, you just get rid of the reverb basically. So now it's clean. Right, so 
So before, it's kind of dirty. And now, clean. So the basic idea is we don't want the beat to sound stiff. And stiff is when you take hits, um, like a kick drum, a snare drum, and you just put them on grid, then they're very stiff and there's no life. And life is always those little tiny subtleties and groove, those imperfections when you hit the hi-hat a little bit too late or a little bit too early. So to me, it's always just so boring when you just program a drum kit and make it sound like a real drum kit. It never does because it's just not a real person who's playing that. So to me, it's more about finding the, the sounds that sound nice and thick and round and adding some imperfections by using fully um, random objects, um, like just playing a beat on the table. And you just record that, edit that, but because of the dynamics, it will create a groove. <laughs> 